We use science in our everyday lives. The soap we have, the electricity, or maybe when constructing buildings. Now let's go one by one with the uses of science in our everyday lives. Good day everyone. Now, we are proceeding to P6, but before we start our topic, have you ever tried to rub your hair with a balloon to make it stand up, seen or seen a lightning strike, or get yourself an electric shock? Well, these phenomena are caused by static electricity. It states that the static electricity is the result of an imbalance between negative and positive charges in an object. These charges can build up on the surface of an object until they find a way to be released or discharged. Electric charge or charge is a fundamental physical property that causes the object to experience an enticing or impulsive force against one another. This means that without electric charge, there won't be any electricity and without electricity, there won't be any of our gadgets such as our precious phones. The most common application of electric charges, insulators, and conductors in our daily life is serography. Serography is a dry copying process based on electrostatics. As many of the machines use this process to provide copies of documents and other visual images onto paper or plastic film quickly and cheaply. Of course, electricity needs a medium to pass along charges. These are split into insulator and conductors. An insulator is a material that does not allow the easy flow of electricity or heat. For example, rubber. The properties of a rubber also cause the electrons to slow down and eventually prevent them from moving at all. The next is conductor. A conductor is an object or a type of material that allows the flow of charge. Electrical current in one or more direction. Example, copper. The valence electrons are free and repel each other so strongly that other's electrons are attracted to them. This effectively drives or conducts the electricity down the copper piece. Of course, electricity might be good and beneficial but it still should be handled with care to avoid accidents. Here are some tips to keep you safe at home. 1. Avoid water at all the times when working with electricity. Never touch or try repairing any electrical equipment or circuit with wet hands. Number two, always use appropriate insulated rubber gloves and goggles while working on any brand circuit or any other electrical circuit. Good day everyone! In your daily life, you are constantly confronted with solution, particularly in your home. The concentration of a solution indicates how much solute have been dissolved in the solvent. And there are numerous ways how to express the concentration of a solution. Percent by mass. It tells you how much of each element present in a compound, which is a combination of two or more elements by mass. The nutrition label found in every container of processed food employs the concept of percent composition. A mold serving size is break down into five categories total fat, cholesterol, sodium, total carbohydrate, and protein. Also, these categories are subdivided into subtopics and so on. Percent by volume. It is a measure of substances concentration in a solution. It is calculated by multiplying the volume of the solute by the total volume of the solution by 100. When washing a clothes, you use a specific amount of liquid based on the load or volume of the tongue and clothes being washed. When using concentrated liquid detergent, you mix a predetermined amount of cleaner with a predetermined amount of water. PPM stands for parts per million is a weight-to-weight -to -weight ratio for describing concentration. It is the number of contaminant units of mass per million total mass units. In gardening, for example, PPM is used to calculate the concentration of a contaminant in soils and sediments. In that case, one part per million is equal to one milligram of substance per kilogram of solid. 
Mole fraction is the way of describing a composition. Is the formula used to get the mole fraction? Now, to explain the molarity and molality, let's call on John Ryan Ilarte. Thank you, Desmonds and Covert. Molarity indicates the number of moles in a liter of solution. To get the molarity, the formula is used. The other way is the molality. The difference between molarity and molality is that molality is based on the kilogram of solvent, while molarity is based on a solution. Also, molality express concentration does not change even though the temperature changes. To get the molality, the formula is used. Now that we know what molarity and molality is, here are some ways of using it in our daily lives. While cooking a pasta for a family gathering, a person needs 100 grams of sodium chloride in 2.5 liters of solution. Sodium chloride have 58.44 gram per mole, and when you divide it to 100 grams, you will get an approximate of 1.71 moles of sodium chloride. Our next real life example will be for molality. Now that summer is fast approaching, watermelon is one of the best refreshment you can have to quench our thirst and cool our bodies. Commonly, watermelon weigh 10 kg and packed with lots of seeds. On average, watermelon have over 600 seeds, thus making it 60 seeds per kilogram. Have you ever wondered? How do animals reproduce? How do plants reproduce? Hmm. Then wonder no more. Hi everyone, I'm Sarvil Rayan A. Amaba. For today, join us as we discuss our topic for today about plant and animal, organ systems, and their functions. The organisms comprises a body with different organ systems together for the body to function normally. Plants, animals, and other organisms have the ability to reproduce. So what reproduction, by the way? Reproduction is a biological process in which different organisms can produce another of their kind and allow organisms to propagate and improve their species. In plants and animals, reproduction may either be asexual or sexual, so let's get to know this one by one. Asexual reproduction to define does not involve gametes or sex cells, which can be observed in some plants and the lower forms of animals. To give you an idea about asexual reproduction, I will show you the samples of it. First is a body that occurs to an organism's hydra. The second is fragmentation that occurs to an organism's starfish. The third is binary fission that occurs to the organism's cyanobacteria. Fourth, vegetative reproduction occurs to some plants. And lastly, spore formation occurs to the friends. Now let's proceed to sexual reproduction. To define this involves the union of gametes, sperm, and egg cells, inside or outside the body of an organism. It is exhibited only by the higher forms of organisms, including humans. In this process, the sperm and the egg cell used to create a fertilized egg known as the zygote, eventually becoming the embryo. Now, let's proceed to reproductive traits in organisms. The reproduction of different organisms plays a vital role in the continuation of their species and their survival. Plants and animals both use the color display for reproduction. Some plants have bright colored flowers to attract insects, thus enabling the transfer of pollen from one flower to another. And some animals also use the color display to attract a male. Before we end, let's apply our discussions to an actual life situation. Plant and animal organ systems and their functions play a vital role in the environment. These organisms make the ecosystem balanced, and at the same time, some of these organisms are a source of food. These topics convey information relative to their organ system, especially their reproductive system. So this is some examples of how we can apply these discussions in real life.